I did a video recently about the delivery industry, which is basically global weights, like all of these delivery companies and how they make money. Spoiler alert, they don't because they are basically subsidizing all of these deliveries heavily because they're trying to get as many users as possible. It's the old scale versus profit. You can scale faster by putting more money into it and by making it cheaper and making the experience better for the end users. But of course, you're not going to be profitable that way. This whole approach is already very, very shaky when it comes to delivery when it comes to global and all of these companies, but they are still very much tech companies. When it comes to hardware, they have these backpacks, right? But all of the hardware that's going to be transferred mostly is going to be what the people buy and then hand over to the people purchasing it, right? There are special cars and scooters in some regions, but mostly it's just an app and a backpack. So it's very simple. The hardware part is very, very simple, right? So I can see why they try to scale that way. If you look at the scooter industry, for example, Lime, for example, Bird, like all of these scooters, that are standing around there it's a little bit different because their whole business is revolving around two things the app where people can actually book something and then the scooter itself and the scooter itself has a lot of maintenance needs it has production costs you have to constantly swap out the battery if it's not good enough you have to make sure that the battery always charges properly so these companies don't scale like software companies so in contrast to the delivery industry most companies in this industry aren't public the only one i found is actually public is bird so i was looking at their financials so this 2020 we're looking at one quarter right so you can see they had about 38 million in revenues within that quarter and then if you look at their margin which excludes all of the cost products of sales and so on it's just 3 million so this is already a very tiny margin right and then you can see the other operating expenses they're accumulating to 100 million the revenues 37 million drop it down to the margin 3.4 million but then you have a hundred million in other operating expenses so if you just look at the loss from the operation you have a loss of 90 six million from the operation interestingly they had other income so they ended up actually making a profit within that time but not from operations their operations operating at a major loss so the loss from the operation 96 million right so how for example does the ceo of bird think the industry is going to develop you know the micromobility industry you know seems to be following a similar path as kind of the cell phone industry and you know, back in, 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 I guess, you know, in the years leading up to the iPhone, I would say when, you know, the electric scooter, which we first launched in 2017. It's like the phone industry. This is kind of insane to me. Probably wasn't even the iPhone moment for the industry. I mean, it seems like we're still waiting for, you know, that iPhone moment. I, I usually. So the whole phone analogy was the first thing that really struck me because it doesn't make any sense for me. Maybe this is a common thing within the industry to say, OK, this is the revolution. This is going to change the world. This is the most amazing thing. But we are still waiting for the iPhone moments. And 20, 30 years later, they're still waiting for the iPhone moment. Because how would that even look like? How would the scooter industry or let's say the micro mobility industry, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. And let's say we look at the entire industry, right? How is that going to have? a moment now that's going to transform everything to the same degree as the iPhone transformed the industry. No idea. Say the, the electric scooter is maybe like the Motorola Rose, uh, Razor uh, of, of the of the industry, which is a, you know, people really like the Razor a lot, but it, it really did accelerate things even further. Uh, and it's, it, you know, super excited to see what this industry is going to create over the next decade. Absolutely. And I, I feel the same way. I think the iPhone moment is yet to come um, and it's, it's going to be very much a software enabled product and service software iphone model for the micro mobility industry this is a little bit of a tough thing because you can understand it in two different ways right is it something that's going to add a wow benefit to the user such as myself who wants to use lime or bird or whatever and i'm going to say wow this is amazing what kind of software could you give me who just wants to go to the supermarket that makes me say oh my god this is amazing this is a million times better than before on the other side maybe they're talking about an iphone moment that is just making the service better but it doesn't necessarily interface with the consumer directly but on the one hand, you know, we're excited about the future. On the other hand, we're still only a four-year-old company. And so, you know, staying, staying focused is also important. So trying to find that right balance is important. You know, for us, we think, you know, we tapped onto this massive, you know, sharing opportunity with first e-scooters and now, now e-bikes. And that'll continue to be, you know, a major, a major focus for us. But as you mentioned, you know, we have branched out into uh, consumer products and, and selling, you know, e-bikes and e-scooters uh for personal ownership because you know we it fits very squarely into our mission of trying to replace as many gas trips as possible 
And and so some people want to rent, and that's 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 great, and we'll be there for them. This is an, just from a business perspective an interesting trajectory because you would think that a company like Bird, which is all about sharing and micro mobility and so on, it makes sense to add different vehicles. Like we have a bike, we have a moped, we have a scooter, you know. But it's interesting that they're also going into the direction where they want to sell, basically just selling scooters or selling a bike. It's actually very counterintuitive because I would think that okay, but then you're competing with a market that exists for a long time. Now you want to do that too why do you want to go in that direction shouldn't you go all in on the sharing economy shouldn't you go all in on having this mobility as a service approach where basically people rent it out otherwise you're just going to compete with more and more people maybe get distracted if you're doing that too yeah i mean we, we certainly uh, do have ambitions to continue to you know come up with as i mentioned new form factors really to go after as as many short distance trips as possible um, what you what you won't see us do is build an electric you know car or something like that. I mean, uh, I think that's already like hyper competitive space. And frankly, you know, our roads today just can't keep up with the amount of traffic that cars are creating. So to me, it seems like you know micro EVs uh, and, and in particular things that can go in the bike lane um, are are the most interesting. But I, I do think there's going to continue to be innovations on the form factor. I'm actually wondering about the entire industry because a lot of these devices are currently relatively expensive. So an e-bike and an e-scooter, but they're getting cheaper over time, right? So I'm wondering as lithium batteries become cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, then at what point does it make no sense at all to have these things lying around if you could just buy it for 50 bucks or 100 bucks, if it ever gets to that price point? Let's say at some point you're going to buy a scooter for under 100 bucks just like they can buy a bicycle or a skateboard or whatever you know maybe even more r d than than we could in the past um but i you know i think I, there'll be all sorts of interesting things there from us and, and i'm sure others on on this call um but you know on the infrastructure side I, I do think you know trying to figure out ways to work with cities you know to get more dedicated parking infrastructure and more bike lanes i mean it kind of surprises me a lot that there's not one dedicated micro EV parking space on every downtown city core block. That doesn't surprise me at all because the only benefit I see at this point of using these things instead of buying them are the price because you can just use them really cheaper. You don't need to buy them. You save quite a bit of money at this point, but in the future, this is probably going to change. And then the other one is they are everywhere and you can just leave them everywhere. You don't need to drive them and to bring them to some type of parking spot. You can just go to the supermarket and you leave it in front of the supermarket and then maybe you just go home afterwards you don't need to deal with extra logistics it's already kind of an adventure to find one you have to look in the app and it's like finding a treasure right you just look okay, here where is it and then you go there imagine every time you have to pick one up you have to find a parking space and every time you stop using it you have to leave it at the parking space i actually think this would be very counterproductive so if i had to guess as someone who is an expert i think this industry is going to suffer quite a bit and i think if they can prove that this actually helps the environment then maybe this is some Something that can be very subsidized maybe from governments or from cities themselves but i'll be curious how long this approach is going to be profitable for the companies that are and for the companies that are burning cash in the same way bird is doing i wonder how sustainable that is all right thanks for watching